Hello fellow makers and welcome to Maker Centered Learning Part 2. There is a link to the slides 4N14 capital N go.iu.edu slash 4N14 and then there is a link to my website which is a blog um, and a bunch of pages of you know, maker information, maker ideas, maker projects. We are on social media at Uplands Maker for the Uplands Maker Mobile. I am Paul Shercliffe. There is my email and uh, p-s-h-i-r-c-l-i at iu.edu. I've been in education for about 25 years, mostly physics and mathematics, uh, but doing lots of projects and at the end lots of maker kind of ideas. And now I want to help other people get more maker into the learning experiences. So you might want to pause it and make sure you get those links that you need. In part two, we are going to talk about classroom examples and just share some ideas of how we do Maker in the classroom. So first of all, I had asked a group of teachers on how they already do some making in classroom, because I think you probably already do some making, uh, but there's a little shift from just making to maker-centered learning. Um, we got roller coasters, we got Play-Doh, we got PLTW, painting, origami, rockets, um, giant sundial on the playground, yes, uh, pinhole photography, dream catchers, ooh, lots of imagery and ideas with that, um, origami ornaments, bracelets, jewelry, yes, jewelry is an important maker. So, you know, think about how you already do some making in your classroom. That's important. And now here's the little shift. Making maker-centered learning is the avenue to the learning. Um, it's our vehicle. It's how we get to the learning. Um, it's not a culminating activity. It's not the making at the end. It's not the build project at the end of the learning. Here we're going to do a week of worksheets and we're going to make something. That is not maker-centered learning. Uh, maker-centered learning is designing, creating um, through the whole time and weaving in uh, the ideas through conversations, discussions, and questions. Um, so it's a shift. Maker-centered not making at the end learning okay so here's the the question you've got to get in your head uh, the planning question we got a topic what can we design and create that allows us to have the conversations we want to have about the content what can we design and create um, that allows us to talk about the topic and allows kids to ask questions about the topic um, and it can be different for different teachers. I mean, it is. You have different specialties. You come from different places in your life. You do different things. You like different things. I mean, that's okay. Um, we can have this. We can have similar content conversations, making different things. Um, because the learn, I forget, the learning is in the conversations. That's an important part of maker centered learning. Uh, the learning uh, and the assessment happens in the conversations and the questions. All right, so examples. Mathematics. Um, kids can't measure stuff. I got high school kids that can't use a measuring tape. Um, th everyone will say, yeah, we got kids that can't, don't know how to measure stuff. I think because it's out of context, um, they measure because it's a worksheet. We got to measure and use do this worksheet kind of thing, and they get it for the worksheet, and then it's gone. Um, I think they got to make their own ruler. I think they have to make their own measuring devices. They've got to put the tick marks down where they need to go and that i think that'll help them understand the tick marks and you also get to have questions about well how many tick marks do you need on a measuring device do you need uh tenths do you need hundredths do you need ace do you need sixteenth i mean those questions uh, and when they make it they also get to personalize it so it's theirs they you know i have a friend on twitter who says you know makerspace is just math in practice um yeah if they don't actually have to do something with the measuring then it doesn't matter Measuring is really important when you make something and it has to go together. So, not only do they need to make their own measuring devices, I saw something on Facebook, I think, or Twitter. Um, it was a kid who made, uh, 3D printed his own, his own measuring cups. And, you know, one cup uh, was a cylinder. And a half cup was half a cylinder. And a quarter cup was a quarter of the cylinder. What a great idea. Um, you know, we want to talk about... Um, proportions in math a lot well i think they need to i think they need to make stuff you know model things 
3 d design it. They don't have to print it. They can just 3D design it or you know, make stuff out of cardboard. What does it mean to say something is three times as big? Well, is it just three times taller? Or you know, re what really happens when you want to talk about volume when you when you multiply stuff? Um, they've they've got to make it. They got to get their hands on it. Um, you study shapes an awful lot in math, which is important because shapes kind of build the world. Um, I think they got to build the shapes, and they can build them out of anything. Coffee stirrers and pipe cleaner pieces, not whole pipe cleaners. Get the pipe cleaners, cut them into like two inch pieces. Um, that makes right connections and build shapes out of pipe cleaners. You can build three dimensional shapes. You can build two dimensional shapes. Um, those two pieces are the pieces you need for for to build a geodesic dome. Um, like kind of kind of what's on the right, but it's a slightly different dome. Um, I had one time in geometry class, we I decided to go get outside and do some stuff, and we split the class in half. And they each had to make this uh, geodesic dome, which is about seven feet tall in the middle, I think. Um, I bought PVC. I bought the hubs from someone because the hubs have to be, the angles had to, the holes had to be drilled in a certain space, certain um, angle. I didn't want to mess with that. Someone had already done that. Um, so what they had to cut the PVC. Uh, we got to talk about shapes and design, and they had to market it as whether it was a... Uh, a garden shed, a tool shed, a play shed, a jungle gym. Um, so part of the group had to create marketing stuff for it. Part of the group had to build it. And I had one part of the group, it was just one or two kids, had to uh, reverse engineer that hub so we could 3D print it. Um, and find out it's a lot more expensive to 3D print the hub than it is to cut a piece of 4-inch PVC. Um but we got to have money questions. We got to have all these discussions. And the neatest part was that the kids who were building, you know, they get a little bit tired of building. And they would go over and work with the uh, the, uh, the the part that was doing the advertising. And sometimes the kids doing the advertising uh, wanted to go over and build something. So they went and helped build. I mean, so they all just kind of shift their, oh, naturally. Um, so build shapes out of whatever you got. Um, physics, we always have to talk about motion. So, you know, build hovercrafts, build mousetrap cars, build stuff that the that move. Um, give <laughs> the hovercraft, that's a leaf blower that's a battery operated. Mine was, uh, I never took pictures of mine. I wasn't in the mode of taking pictures back then when, I, when, we, when we did it for some reason. Um, my leaf blower was uh, corded, and I, I gave them a 100 foot cord on a 90 foot gym. So they kept running into the wall, and they couldn't figure it out. But a lot of us have discussions about physics, right? Friction. What is this thing called friction? Um, they never got hurt. It was just, it was more fun to them than anything else. You know, if you got to talk buoyancy, you know, you build boats. Yeah, you build them out of foil. You build them out of paper. You know, origami. Ooh, there we go. Um, yeah, build them out of cardboard. You, you know, what? You 3D design them if you've got 3D printers. You build them out of whatever you got. You don't have to have a 3D printer. You don't have to have a laser cutter. Um, I love schools that have uh, pools, and they uh, build a. The kids have to paddle. A, they have to build a boat that fits them and the partner, and they have to paddle across uh, the pool. You know, whoever gets across gets an A, a kind of thing. I don't know. It wins something, and most yeah, most kids don't make it. I actually thought about buying a uh, like a three foot deep. Uh, pool and putting it outside my room and you know filling it with water and trying to do that I just never got that far with it um, you know biology we're always talking about biomes plants animals so have them make the biome well this was a seventh grade project that, that I did is they had to pick 10 animals they had to pick their biome they had to pick 10 animals 10 plants tell me about them um, here are some words you had to use you know um, primary consumer thing you know things like that uh, and make it and you know one girl loved painting so she brought in an easel brought in her paints and painted it and we had you know conversations while she painted it you know this kid on the right liked drawing and some of the parts of that drawing are awesome and we talked about that and th they also said well my camel kind of was really bad i said yeah that's okay yeah it's not that great but hey look at those mountains those are great those cacti those look awesome you know, and then we get to talk about, you know, the the animals and the plants and, you know, what are their roles? You know, how's this biodiversity happening? You know, you know, some kids wanted to make a diorama. Okay, let's do it. 
Now, I also had the, my Cricut in class and the 3D printer uh, from the school in class. And, I, you know, it was kids were doing stuff. Hey, you want to make a sticker of your animal? Put it on your computer? Put it on your phone? Um, or do you want to make a 3D print a keychain of your animal? And so some kids did. And so and it was great because we could have more conversations. Well, why is that your favorite animal? What role does it play? Who eats it? What eats it? That all these things we could have more conversations while they got to, you know, make some stuff that they have. And, and I just came up with the idea that let's put the negatives up on paper and people could see what we were doing kind of thing. Yes, there are a couple Disney princesses up there and that's okay. There's even a band up there. Um, you know, we study uh, d DNA and genetics in, in biology class. Well, design monsters, uh, designer uh, mythological creatures, whatever. Make them however they want. You know, we can just draw them. That's fine. Um, if you can't draw, then maybe we need to do like color forms where you get pieces of felt or, pa or uh, colored paper and like put them, to put them together. Um, you could 3D design. I mean, there's different ways to do this, but you have the conversations about the DNA and the genetics. I think the next step for something like this would be to make like uh, stuffed animals, like little plushies. So that'd be sewing um, with, with felt or with, with fabric. And then, you know, maybe you could then donate the plushies to a hospital. I think that'd be, that'd be kind of neat. Science always has to talk about earthquakes. So you got to build buildings. You got to build a shake table. You got to build buildings. Start with simple materials, um, spaghetti, marshmallows, uh, straws, coffee stirs, wooden ones, popsicles, I mean, you know, work your way up, you know, use the materials you got, you want, then you can go to, to designing with laser cutting and 3D printing if you want, if you got those. Um, you got to build stuff, you got to build buildings and talk about them. Um, some do this like with bridges, you know, they, they always talk about, they, there's always bridge building contests. There are lots of board games, and some kids actually love board games. Some kids will just put up with them, but board games are really neat. You should have a, a whole tote full of just board games in your in your room or available in your area, your team, whatever. Um, but there are a lot of history board games that already exist. Grab those things, bring them in. Let's play the board games, and then let's let's just let's just make a board game that talks about our the, our history, our civilization, our city, our town, our our society that we're trying to do. You know, kids designing board games is a lot of critical thinking, a lot of creativity, a lot of curiosity, a lot of collaboration. You know, they got to make the board, they got to make the rules, they got to make the cards, they got to make the pieces, and the pieces could be buttons, the pieces could be a rock. Uh, the pieces could be a 3D printed thing. Pieces could be a laser cut. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, let them, you know, give them that, that, that creativity. They could make them out of just cardboard and hot glue and f fabric and, and coffee and, ju and just craft stuff. Uh, had, there was a biology teacher, was my, my neighbor for a decade or so. And uh, every year, one of his things was a, uh, uh, kids had to design a board game. For one of their topics and the kids loved it yes they do roman history there's a teacher that studies roman history by building all these things like the little you know simple things like it's trebuchet on the right you know it's catapult you know that's it's like you're building a little simple thing to be able to have conversations and that's the point um so you and when you're studying rome Let's build Rome. Let's build the machines of Rome. Let's build the aqueducts. Let's build, you know, let's build this stuff so we can have the conversations. Um, on the left is me, and is my class, because we for physics we built trebuchets. And I made a mistake the first couple years we did it, and I said it, um, it was an at-home project because we didn't have the space and the time to do it in class kind of thing. And I, that was that was just stupid of me. And, you know, it, it was okay. Kids, Some kids had fun. Uh, but usually it was, a, it was one dad in the shop building it for the kids, and the kids never got together kind of thing. Um, that was too often. There was, you know, kid, you could notice it. Um, I remember one time a kid that pulled up outside uh, my classroom doors on the, to the right of that picture there um, and uh, <laughs> just started throwing parts out of his truck because when he was bringing it to school, it slid out of the truck and just broke apart. Um, yeah, it, it's a memory. It's fun things. Um, but then I, after a couple of years, I went to, we're going to build it in class and everyone gets the same. We got a bunch of two by fours and that was, it, it was only going to be four feet tall. And it, the project worked so much better than we, we did it in the gym, four foot tall, launch a softball in the gym. 
Um, it was so much better because by doing it in class, that was the time for the conversations about everything. We were missing the conversations from when I had them do it at home. Um, so, again, it's important. Yeah, and man, if you're studying Greece, let's build Greece. Let's build it. Let's 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 make the jewelry of the time, because that jewelry is, is so much with the, the the culture, the icons, uh, the materials available, in in at in the time, in the town, in the area. I mean, there's so much available there. Uh, English, a lot of imagery ideas. Uh, Kim Stanley class was studying this book, Just Mercy, and this was a project the kid did while building, while reading the book and talking about the book. Is he made a lampshade? He named his project Shining the Light on Social Injustice. You know, there's all the imagery that he says is important from the book. And literally, Shining the Light made it a lampshade. Um, these little tea lights on the bottom right, you can make them out of paper, you can make them out of cardboard, you can, you can laser cut them, you can 3D print them. You buy a little, you know, dollar store tea light, or you just get a bunch of watch batteries and LEDs and use them like that. Um, but again, imagery. Uh, what's the important imagery from the story? What's important Im imagery from the topic we're doing? Da, 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 da. And kids get it cut into the paper, cardboard, acrylic 3D print. Um, what's the important? So you can have conversations. Again, it's about conversations that you're having. Uh, poetry. Uh, I, I wish every school would have a poster printer and kids make poems and put them big size and put them up on the walls and they've got to find imagery that goes along with the poetry or they got to find a friend that's a photographer that can do a nice you know background uh that that gives the mood for the poem kind of thing stuff like that but you know, like david thoreau takes his kids on a walk around school and says hey take pictures of words any place you see words take pictures of words and they come back to the classroom and then they crop and edit and smash their uh pictures together to make some poetry here you know nice creativity right it's really important they and they talk about the poems and the words and the meanings and all those things while they do it um dan Ryder in his class read of mice and men and he wants to do something different with it. i mean it was going okay and kids were doing stuff and participating and you know all, th all things are nice it's, it's just not a, it's not having the impact that he, they wanted, the meaning and they wanted. So they came up with the idea that the kids had to design a tiny house and make a model of a tiny house that fit the needs of the men in the book. And they had to um, use snippets from the book to validate what they put in their tiny house. Um, and they could, they, I think he brought in like people who are in construction industry to talk about ideas and methods also, um, economics, you know, hey, what would this cost kind of thing. So he kind of blend, blended a lot in there. Um, some kids 3D printed, some kids just made it out of cardboard. Um, yeah, like you give them whatever tools, whatever materials you got, you do. Um, again, because it's about the conversations that you can have. And he loved doing this, and I think this is a great idea. Coding robotics can go across uh, multiple, you know, go across all the curriculums. I mean, when I think of like history and some of the times uh, back in society, we studied that they all had some kind of uh, patterns and uh, like tile and on the walls that there were certain patterns that, that, that were particular to that uh, culture kind of thing. And you can create those with code. Um, and again, patterns is also about math. I also think like if you do 3D printing, like that that thing on the bottom right there, that's 3D printed, but that's written with code to create that thing. And then 3D print. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, you don't have to 3D print stuff. You can just create the code, make the image, and then you know take a screenshot of it kind of thing. Or you could actually export uh, stuff from Tinkercad, a 3D printing uh, design software to a, a virtual reality uh, realm kind of thing but you know you can do you can do coding for some of these things um, English uh, they could animate scenes from a story I remember reading about like a sixth grade class that goes down and helps the second grade class second grade cl class is reading a story sixth grade class is studying coding robotics so the sixth graders are the technical help and the second graders are the the content and they, uh, the sixth graders help the second graders animate a scene from their story. Um, great collaboration, and everyone learns a bit about everything kind of thing. 
Um, so yeah, an, animating scenes from stories um, is is great. is a nice way to bring coding robotics in. Fashion. Fashion is, is history to me also because, again, jewelry kind of thing. Um, but you can do coding for fashion. Um, Turtle Stitch does is an embroidery thing. Um, they could 3D print. They could laser cut coding. Um, cut it on the on the Cricut or Cameo, and you know for iron ons. Uh, so again, what's the important imagery uh, from what whatever content we're doing, and let's make some fashion out of it. Wearable stuff. Don't forget outdoor stuff. Gardens are important, and I think every school should have um, outdoor gardens, should have hydroponics, and should have a greenhouse. Now it's not really possible, but it's just a dream. Um, but there's so many topics you can talk about uh, with gardening and even even history and culture from other places because you don't necessarily have to have the same stuff that they had but it allows you to have the conversations about it like we're growing this spice here this isn't the spice that they used back in those days they used and it, it allows them to make those connections kind of thing uh, there's all sorts of nutrition topics you can have science um, history Again, like I said, you know, which cultures had which foods. So much stuff you can do um, with it. And you get to eat stuff. Um, Janu Mikubo does these layered designs with students, and they actually put them in an Altoids tin. Um, and they laser cut them. But you don't have to laser cut them. You don't have to make them out of wood. You can make them out of paper and cardboard. But again, it's scenery. It's imagery. Um of you know, what's important in the story or let's go the other way around let's make a three let's make a layer design and then write a story where that's the setting for it or write a poem where that's the setting um again we have different ways of being being creative they also add lights to theirs uh so it's a kind of a full kind of range because again it's all about the conversations you can have around the artifact, around the design, around the creation. It's process over product. Conversations and questions while you're designing and creating. Weave in the content through the design and creation process. The, the prime question. When you're thinking of topic, okay, I got this topic. What can we design and create that allows us to have the conversations we want to have about the content? That's what we want to get. Thanks for listening. There is the shortened, shortened link for the slides. The website for Uplands Maker Mobile. Uplands Maker Mobile is on Twitter and Facebook at Uplands Maker. And the email for the Uplands Maker Mobile, which comes to me and my boss, is makervan at indiana.edu. Have a good day.